Hello and welcome to Enterclimate. My name is Shalin Verma and in this video we will understand the Pollution Control Board's guidelines for waste management in dairy farms in urban and rural areas. So, these CPCB guidelines for waste management aim to promote a sustainable practice in the dairy industry. In the past two decades, the dairy farming in India has become a crucial source of additional income for millions of rural families and has emerged as an important business activity for small-scale farmers. Now, as per serial number 87 of the notification released by CPCB in 2020, dairy farms have been categorized in the orange category. Standalone or isolated dairy farms with more than 15 animals have to obtain CTE and subsequently a CTO in the orange category. These establishments include those dairy farms where mulching animals are housed to produce milk or distribution and supply it to dairy processing plants. If we talk about gaushalas, they have been placed in the green category and include establishments where, apart from mulching, weak, injured, sick and handicapped cattle and cows are housed for rehabilitation. However, if the waste water generation for gaushalas is more than 100 kiloliters per day, they will be categorized in the orange category. Both these entities will have to follow the guidelines of the environmental management of dairy farms and gaushalas issued by the CPCB. Now, what are the waste management issues associated with dairy farms and gaushalas? Let's understand. The primary waste management concerns associated with these establishments is related to dung and urine wastewater disposal. Improper handling of these waste products can lead to odor problems. Wastewater generated from these facilities have high organic matter. Bovine animals which have an average weight of around 400 kgs can produce 15 to 20 kgs of dung and 15 to 20 liters of urine daily. Many dairy farms and gaushalas dispose of the dung and wastewater by releasing it into drains which often leads to clogging and ultimately polluting the rivers. Disposing of cow dung is a major challenge for dairy farms and gaushalas. So, let's understand the CPCB guidelines that has been released for their waste management. The first includes solid waste management. As this waste predominantly composes of organic materials such as cow dung, feed residues and bedding waste, these wastes are not inherently hazardous but they require proper handling and disposal. The following are the guidelines for managing solid waste in these establishments. Regularly collecting dung to keep the area clean and prevent unpleasant odors. Properly sanitizing and disinfecting dairy premises and the surrounding areas. Collection and storage of solid waste to prepare for proper treatment. Disposal of hazardous domestic waste such as vaccines, vials, medicines and syringes according to the provisions of the solid waste management rules and the biomedical waste management rules. Avoiding the washing of dung, feed residue or other waste into drains to avoid clogging. The local bodies should ensure that untreated waste is not released outside the dairy premises. Now, some recommended disposal methods for waste management in dairy farms include composting or vermicomposting, biogas or compressed biogas also called CBG production through anaerobic digestion, manufacturing of dung wood to be used as fuel. Now let's understand the guidelines for wastewater management. So the owner of the premises must ensure to manage the water use efficiently by limiting it to 150 liters per day per cattle for drinking, bathing and cleaning services together ensuring that discharged water should be treated sufficiently up to the standards set up by the SPCVs or the PCCs, taking steps to prevent wastewater from percolating through the ground and contaminating groundwater. Lastly, let's understand the guidelines with respect to air emissions. So, a sufficient ventilation for housing animals in order to dissipate the heat, remove humidity and prevent the buildup of harmful gases like carbon dioxide and methane must be included. Next, the owner must also ensure to minimize the odor, nuisance and ensure a good housekeeping of the facility. Next is to ensure adequate space for the animal movement, resting, feeding, watering and ventilation. Next, to modify the quality and dosage of feed, forage, supplements to reduce the enteric methane generation from livestock. And lastly, to plant trees or developing green belts that can act as a barrier against the spread of foul smells or noise originating from dairy farms and gaushalas. 
Now, there are specific citing guidelines issued by the CPCB that will be applicable to new dairy farms. At the same time, the existing establishments are also to take appropriate pollution control measures in the same regard. So, dairy farms and gaushalas should be located outside the city village boundaries at least 20 meters from residential dwellings and 500 meters from hospitals and schools. These facilities should not be located in flood-prone areas subject to flooding at a 1 in 25 year or more frequent levels to avoid contamination of water bodies. Dairy farms and gaushalas should not be located in areas with shallow groundwater depths of about 10 to 12 feet, particularly in alluvium areas, to avoid the contamination of groundwater. Now, the dairy farms and gaushalas may be allowed to follow the minimum distance criteria as shown in the table. So this was all for today's video. For more information on this topic, contact our experts from the contact details provided below. It is advisable to take the experts advice in waste management and dairy farms with more than 10 years of experience in facilitating licensing, approvals and business requirements. Our team at Enderclimate can offer you a one-stop solution for setting up your dairy farm or a gaushala. You can visit our website www.enderclimate.com for more details. So this was all for today's video. Also please like and share this video if you found it helpful. Thank you for watching.